What's going on everybody? Brandon Schaefer here. Thank you for joining me. And yes, this video is sped up. It's sped up four times because if it wasn't, we'd be here all day watching paint dry. Uh, the original video or the original time limit that I spent painting this was about two hours. So I've reduced it down to about 30 minutes. But I, I think it'll still be useful for a lot of you out here. So what I'm starting out with this is a still life of a bowl of lemons, as you can see in the top corner. That's kind of what I was looking at. And I'm doing this from life. This is actually from 2015. And I'm using burnt umber, thinned down with water. So this was water soluble oils, but it doesn't matter. It's oil paint. So if you're using oils, you can thin it down with Gamsol or paint thinner, odor odorless mineral spirits. So I'm starting out with the Burnt Umber sketch, just a real quick sketch, real basic, just trying to work out the composition on the canvas, trying to figure out where things are going to be placed. Basically looking at the still life I have set up across the room and replicating that in thin down paint. And you can see, you can start to already see light and shadow being developed because I'm using a little bit more paint in the shadow areas. So this is kind of my roadmap. This is the beginning how I start a painting. This is the roadmap that's gonna allow me to, you know, it breaks down light versus shadow on the canvas. And it just sets me up later on for figuring out uh, you know, value-wise, or, or at least, you know, it, it's it's a little little bit of a help there in the value department. So I'm starting off with a, uh, a, a little bigger brush here. I think it's a one inch or maybe a one and a half inch bristle brush. And I'm using a dark value. I believe this dark value I have mixed up was burnt umber and blue. And there I'm lightening up, light, lightening it up a little bit as as the background goes into light. So in this first stage of painting, what I'm focused on normally is large shapes. Uh, value definitely helps. I mean, you got to be focused on value when you're painting. That's why drawing is so important for learning to paint. So I'm focused on value, and I'm focused on large shapes. So I'm filling in the background, kind of the foreground underneath the table, all the dark shadow areas. So I'm getting in that dark value. Now I'm going to have to go over these darks again as the painting dries because this is just a thin down. This is just a block in that gets me to where I need to go. You know, it's just the initial development of the painting. All right, so now I'm getting a little more serious here. I'm putting in the shadows of the bowl. You can see I'm slowing down a little bit because this is my focal point, this bowl of lemons. And I really wanna make sure what I'm putting down is mostly correct. So you can see there I started off with the shadows and then I mixed up a lighter color. So I'm trying to key those on the canvas. I'm trying to compare them, making sure that they're reading compared to the background. You know, I gotta make, you gotta focus on the whole of the painting and make sure these colors and values are working uh, comparatively, you know, relatively, make sure they're working together. Basically, does the light value look like light and does the shadow value look like shadow? That's my focus, that's what I'm trying to get across. And this white sheet here is actually pretty difficult because it, it reflects right up into that wooden bowl. And uh, that's something that I'm really going to be focused on getting because it's it's a nice aspect to the painting that's going to give it that realism that I'm looking for. You know, when you have those reflections and things, of reflections on the table, reflections in the bowls, uh, those are the kind of really subtle details that make your painting look realistic. So now I'm filling in part of that gray sheet here. And notice that everything I've been working on so far is right next to the bowl. So I'm, I'm really putting, uh, you know, I'm linking these areas together 
because that's how I'm going to be comparing. So I'm comparing everything to that bowl and everything around it has to, to look like it belongs, like it fits in. And the mixture I'm using here is uh, probably burnt umber and blue and white. So it gives you this nice gray value and I'm kind of just, excuse me, I'm just placing that all over the canvas. Because even though it's a white sheet, there's not, all of it is not in the light. And when something's white and in the shadow, it's going to get darker. It's not going to be white anymore. So here's the last bit of canvas that I need to fill in basically uh, for the most part, that table. I also need to touch up on the lemons there. You know, I think if I would have re redone this painting uh, nowadays, I probably would have filled in the lemons by now because those are a major, those are the major focal point, the bowl and the lemon. Uh, but at this stage, I'm not too worried about anything. Like I can change anything at this stage. There's nothing that's I'm so worried about. There's nothing precious on the canvas right now. I'm going to be tweaking the shapes and playing with edges and colors and values and really tweaking everything. This is just the initial block in the first stage. So right now we're at about the first 30 minutes of the painting so far. And I'm blocking in the shadows of the lemons here. So I've really taken my time on this painting. It's a, I should have said this in the beginning, it's a 12 by 16 canvas panel. So it's a pretty good size. It's a really good size to start out with. I usually like to go smaller, but I had this laying around, I think. So I figured I'd do a large still life, try to step my game up. All right, so now that we have the canvas completely filled up, there's no canvas showing through anywhere. Now we can start relating all these colors and values to one another. So we can see the background and the foreground is gonna need a darker shade. It's gonna have, gonna have more black. We know that the white sheet that I'm working on now is gonna get lighter. And with this painting, something I was doing, I was really trying to focus on brushwork and using the least amount of brush strokes as possible. Uh, not saying I was successful at it, but I'm really happy with the outcome of it. You know, I, I kind of let the brush strokes tell the story, you know, let them do their job rather than overworking it and taking that beautiful brushwork away. So this one was a lot of fun to paint and really challenging too. But, you know, when you're able to realistically render something, it's, it's a lot of fun. So there you can see I'm fixing up the shape of the bowl there, playing with some of the edges, going back to the sheet. So I'm just pushing and pulling paint around, slowly lightening things up. You can see I put all the lights around the canvas with the sheet working very slowly. I'm not jumping right into the brightest highlights or anything like that. I think at this point I, I had read up on Sargent and kind of the method he did or that he talks about or that his students have talked about is that that he worked in the mid-tones in the mid-value range and then worked out going to the darkest value and up to the lightest value. So I think with this painting that was something that I was kind of replicating that process, seeing how it goes. And you can see here, most of the painting is kind of gray, at least in the mid range of values. And now I'm adding in kind of the black, the darker value. And it's actually, it's not black. I, I mixed up my own black. So it's more of an earthy black, burn umber, blue, maybe a little bit of red and yellow, but most probably burn umber, blue, touch of red, maybe warm it up. So I got a really dark value there. And I know that value is correct. I know that really dark, that's probably as dark as I wanna go with it. 
so now that kind of uh, helps me judge the rest of the values on the canvas too. Now I can relate everything to those darks. And also now I'm going back into that background and darkening up the left side of the canvas that needs to be darker. I'm gonna blend that out to the right side. Slowly lightening it up as it goes to the light side and to the right. The right is the light side that's lit up. So I'm gonna be slowly lightening up the value there, blending it out as you'll see here in just a second, I believe. There we go, you can see I'm putting the lighter value down. And I will point out, it's probably hard to see it in this angle, uh, camera angle, but the background sheet that I have, is, it was actually a gray background, but in my painting I kind of made it have a tinge of purple to it. And the reason I did that was f just to create a, a color harmony, color scheme. So with my lemons being the main focal point, I wanted something to kind of balance that or to harmonize with it or uh, complement it, I guess. And the complementary color of yellow is, is purple on the color wheel. So I used a, a grayish purple for the background there on that right side as the sheet. And you'll see that in the finished painting as well. But I think it created a really wonderful harmony. And that's something to think about, you know, when you're painting from life, you know, you can slightly tweak things uh, to your liking, you know, after you do a few still lifes and stuff and you understand how to actually replicate reality, then you can play around with it, have fun with it, tweak the colors a little bit and uh, just have fun and try to create interesting, you know, varieties of color there. So now I'm painting the reflection on the table, painting the bowl into the table, and it looks very amateurish right now. And you, you know, you can kind of notice that as the painting progresses, it's starting to get somewhere. It's starting to slowly get a little more realistic, but it's still not there. You can just, you can see that something's off with it. And I think that's probably the trouble with a lot of beginners is that they don't actually finish the painting. You know, a lot of beginners would probably stop at this stage and they're, they're probably unsure of how to progress. And I would say to just keep painting what you see and just keep trying to, to strengthen your observation skills. Because if the goal is to paint what you see, you got to be able to see pretty well <laughs> in order to paint well. So just playing with the edges of the table there, having some fun. So this is where it starts becoming a little more realistic. You can see I'm putting in very small shapes. I'm going very slow, putting in some darks, you know, a shadow underneath that sheet there on the table, shadow directly right underneath the bowl that actually separates it from the reflection of the table. It's these very small marks and attention to that kind of detail or suggestion of detail that really brings out realism. You know, to create a realistic scene, I don't have to put all the little dots on the lemon. That's kind of, that's not what I'm saying here. It's it's mostly like those value shapes, like that dark underneath the sheet there. Like that's important to, to put down and to realize. You know, it's, it's those kind of things you have to you have to look out for and be aware of. So I just spent some time building up the darks on that sheet a little bit better. And uh, now I'm fixing up the shape of the bowl there. Making sure that I'm getting uh, an ellipse 
and something's not off with it. So really trying to work on that. Something like this bowl is kind of tough because it's symmetrical. And anytime you have symmetry, you always have to get both sides, you know, really accurate. Otherwise, the, your eye is going to pick up right away. You know, the, the viewer's eye will pick up right away that something looks off. All right, so now we're adding in some lighter areas on that sheet. And you can see it's it's slowly coming to life. And that's really what I'm... That's how I, I like to work a painting is to just build up to that last level of of, of life. <laughs> you know, the last, slowly build up these values because it's, it's easy to overdo it. Uh, especially if you're a beginner, it's easy to just, you know, put some <laughs> pure titanium white on that sheet and it'll totally ruin the mood and the value structure of your of your painting. And I will say, I don't think I ever use pure white in this painting. Even the highlights on the sheet, I have some temperature to them. A little bit of warmth to them, not pure white. And I think that's really what, what in the end, made it look quite realistic. All right, working into that bowl again. See now, I'm starting to work on the light areas now. I've pretty much got the shadows down, shadow areas done for the most part. So now I'm trying to build up the lights a little bit more. I kind of work the painting back and forth from light to dark. I go into the darks, then I go back into the lights, light those up a little bit more, go back to the darks, add in some reflected light. You know, start adding some highlights. And then, you know, then you pretty much have everything on the painting you need. You have the highlights, the light, the midtones, reflected light, shadows, dark accent, you know, those kinds of things. If you guys have any questions, just be sure to post them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Really subtle detail right there. Did you see that stroke? Me putting a reflection of the sheet into the table, onto the table. Very small detail that I think a lot of be beginners might miss. And that's what makes these reflections. These reflections give it that realism. And see, I'm painting some more here now. Light area on the table reflecting that sheet that's right above it. And you can clearly see it in the in the reference photo. The reflection there. Of course, the reflection that I'm looking at, um, you know, the reference photo there is a little bit higher up, so it's going to look different than what I'm painting. I'm sitting down when I'm painting this. And that reference photo is from a video of me standing up, taking video of it. All right, we're getting to the thing I was, I've was i been avoiding the entire time, that reflection of the sheet on the bowl. So slowly blending that in. And then I'm going to slowly work up the values there, adding thicker paint and lighter values. I will say this was a very challenging still life for me. This was one of my very first oil painting still lifes back in 2015. I was still this at this point I was using water soluble oils. So this was this was very challenging to me and getting that bowl to be symmetrical and look realistic. But I think the more I keep adding to it, the closer it's getting there. So it's it's really, you know, patience is like the huge thing when it comes to creating a painting, a still life like this, and anything realistic. I mean, you're just going to have to be patient and be very observant. I think I think beginners too much, they just don't have the patience. And uh, people that people that don't want to paint or, you know, they, they don't think they're good at painting. I think they really just lack the patience to develop the skills needed to do something like this. All right, we're working back on the lemons now. Those are something I've been neglecting the entire painting as well.
So just working these shadow shapes here, the reflected light. And I, pr I pretty much just work on one lemon until I'm happy with it and then move on to the next one and just try to get as realistic as I can. So now you can see there I'm adding a lighter value now, blending that in with the other paint that was on there. And I'm just moving lemon to lemon. There's the end of a little stem of a lemon there. I should probably stop messing with that lemon, move on to the next ones. <laughs> it's funny watching this back, you can I can just see how much I'm, I'm fiddling with things, but it did come out, the painting did come out well, so I can't be too hard on myself, but you know, it's just trying to maintain that strong brushwork, keep it simple, you know, that's the best thing you can do is just keep these, these kinds of paintings very simple. Don't try to overcomplicate things for yourself. But I'm, I'm being really observant here. I'm trying to see all the different kinds of yellows and oranges that are on these lemons. And, you know, the bowl is kind of reflecting onto the lemons, creating some uh, warm reflected light in the shadow areas and things like that. So I'm trying to really be aware of all that. And now at this stage, you can start to see the painting really coming together. This is where I'm in the final stretch here. I've, I've been painting for probably about an hour and a half. Got about a half an hour left on it and, you know, things are getting really close to being finished here. And really the way to know when it's finished is, you know, did you, um, did you achieve what you set out to achieve, you know, it's basically you kind of have a goal or a concept before you sit down and do a painting or at least try to. And, you know, for a still life like this, obviously it's, did I capture what's in front of me to my liking? And uh, that's when I know that I'm done. When I don't see anything else to really correct. So I think all the touches from here on out are probably going to be very minor tweaks. You know, there I go tweaking the bowl a bit, putting in a, a slight reflection in the bowl, softening some edges, bringing things out a little bit more. You know, when you get to this stage in a painting, it's real easy to mess up the painting. And, and you can ruin a painting really quickly in this stage. So I'm being very careful here, but this is pretty bold, a bold move here, putting that, the light on the, the bowl, but it definitely needs it. It definitely needs that stronger color that the bowl actually has. You can actually see part of the bowl off to the very right of the video there, that orange. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking at and seeing, trying to replicate that, that kind of look of the bowl there. But at this stage in the game of the painting, I'm just, I'm being very careful, really taking my time with each brush stroke and making sure to take a step back, assess what needs to be, you know, is there anything needs to be fixed and then uh, going back into it. So I'm working on the edge of the bowl there, the lip of the bowl. Just ever so slightly tweaking values here, tweaking little things. 
and really, I mean, you can push realism as far as you want. Like I could just be here for days and days just pushing paint around and using a smaller and smaller brush and getting super hyper realistic, but it's not really what I'm setting out to achieve. It's not really what I'm going for. You know, I, I want to let the brushwork show. I want to have that speak for itself and and have the illusion from a few feet back that it looks realistic. And then when you look up close, it's a bunch of brush strokes and color. You know, that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm not trying to destroy that brushwork. You can see the nice little highlights there I put on the lemons. You can also see I, I've really reserved my, my values in this painting. Like, I mean, obviously I could have made the white sheet. I could have used pure white in this painting if I wanted and really brought the values up, really made those lemons, you know, lemon yellow and really made them glow. But I was, you know, I was really going for something else. I really wanted to maintain kind of a lower key type of painting, very colorful. You know, there's a lot of color in this painting, strong color, saturation, I should say. So that's really what I was going for, because usually the lighter you make something, the less saturation it has. So one last time, I'm putting in some darks in the background. I felt like it needed to be a little bit darker. So hitting up some of that a little bit. And these are all like final touches. This is, you know, putting in the dark accents, basically. Um, tweaking anything that I, that I see that needs to be tweaked. Moving real slowly on the lemons there, softening an edge, you know, putting in a reflection or something. And uh, now I'm signing the painting. So we've made it to the end, guys. Thank you for watching. If you made it all this way, stay tuned. You'll see the final result here. Uh, this is right after I painted it. We'll get some close-ups here. I think it came out pretty well overall. And in just a few seconds, you'll see the final completed painting, uh, photo of the final painting after I photographed it and what that looks like. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Peace.